understand how to fulfill a commandment that Jesus gave when he said let no man deceive you. Let no man deceive you. And the only way to do that is to of course seek God's guidance and to keep your eyes on the scriptures. No matter what you hear Keep your eyes on the scripture. And though you might not understand a lot of things, if what you're hearing, if they cannot at least use the scriptures to show it as they say it, and as they teach it, then don't you buy it. It's a safeguard. When I was in Russia, during the time when we uh, had the two presidents, the United States was going through some crisis. I was upstairs in my room praying. And uh, some of the American brethren were downstairs fellowshipping. But they were there for the first time, but I'd already been throughout, throughout Russia several times. St. Petersburg, Chilny, Tordeston, Moscow. Uh, and so I was, I was praying. And I said, Lord, you know, Everybody is incorporating women ministers, no, or pastors, and everybody. And so I, 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 I tried to look, I, I, I tried to fit it in the scriptures, but I, I ended up being confused. I said, Lord, this is confusing me. I said, everybody, just about. And then the Lord spoke to me. And he said, you don't judge the scriptures by the opinions of others. You don't measure the scriptures by what others are teaching. But you measure what they're teaching by the scriptures. He said, you don't take the doctrine of men and try to fit it into the scriptures because they don't fit. You'll end up confused. And when I heard that, my understanding came and the confusion left. See, because everybody's doing it and everybody's saying it doesn't mean it's right. And when it comes to scripture and understanding the Bible, you don't want to take your beliefs and try to fit it in the scriptures. Because if it's not scriptural, it won't work. You'll end up having to add, such as the Jehovah Witnesses. Now, if you take a Jehovah Witness, and go word for word, scripture for scripture, they cannot defend their doctrine. This is why they have the AIDS. 
And they say that these aids or these books are to help uh, bring out the scriptures, but they're contrary to the scriptures. For instance, there was a teaching, uh, I believe they still teach it, that Jesus is Michael the Archangel. I talked to one elderly woman uh, in the witnesses and I said, I, I have several debates with them and uh, we, we had an understanding. I even, they even called a circuit overseer down in on me. But I said to the mother, show me in the scriptures where it says that Jesus is Michael the Archangel. She said, young man, I'll show it to you. And she took me to Daniel chapter 12, verse 1. I believe it when it says, the great prince Michael will stand up for his people. He said, you see, there it is. I said, ma'am, that says Michael. Well, who else is a great prince but Jesus? I said, ma'am, that said Michael. Now, your book will tell you that that's Jesus. But I feel the virtue. You understand somebody. But the scriptures says it's Michael. So, to be safe, and not that you have to be a scholar, but to be safe, simply ask them to show you what they are saying in the scriptures. Show it to me. If they say, it is a sin for a man to have more than one wife at one time. Don't have a problem with that. Now, show me where that is written. If they say, it is all right for same sex to marry, according to the scriptures, show me where that is written. If they say that Jesus was a man and not God at all, show me where the Bible says that. And if they cannot show you where the scriptures put it like they are saying it, if they say, well, the scriptures don't put it like that, then tell them to show me how it does put it, what you are saying. It doesn't make a difference how powerful, how, 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 how exciting the message is. If it's not scriptural, don't buy it. Don't buy it. It won't fit. And, and, and it's very important. They have a famous teaching called the rapture. The pre-rapture teaching teaches that Jesus can come any day now. There's nothing else left to be fulfilled to keep Christ from coming. And that he will come secretly and snatch the righteous out of this world. And that's when you see the movies on airplanes crashing, cars crashing, people disappearing, and those that are left are shook up because they missed the rapture. And then the Antichrist will come forth. And they say he will take them out of the world for seven years and then come back down for his second coming. Now all that sounds good, except one thing. It is not what? It's not scripture. They have made Hollywood movies off of it and everything. As a matter of fact, it has done nothing but conjured up a bunch of false prophecies. Remember the 2000 scandal? All the computers were supposed to shut down and they prophesied the end of the world. There was even one individual that had everybody thinking a few years ago that on the third day the end of the world was coming. I was at a dentist office and the young lady said, are we going to be here tomorrow? I said, if God don't take your life down, we'll still be here. <laughs> and the Y2, what have they called it? The Y2 scandal in 2000, whatever. Uh, 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 a, a woman that was well respected at a church called me and said, Bishop, what are you telling your people to do for the, for the Y2 scandal or whatever? I said, nothing. She said, oh, don't you want to be prepared? I said, we're prepared. I said, I haven't heard a voice from God saying that the catching up with the church will be here. Neither have I heard the words coming from a true prophet. I said, ma'am, we don't budge unless it is scripture and unless the information comes from a reliable source. And of course, 
This is 2019, according to the Gregorian calendar. And then some would make fun and laugh. Better safe than sorry, and they laugh. You see, the things of God is not funny. Amen. So in order to not be deceived, you have to at least keep your eyes on the scriptures. You may not know more than the individual that's preaching or talking to you. But let them talk. Because if they if, if you're debating or you're discussing, just listen to what they're saying and ask them to show you from old to new. Now, some may take the Sabbath and show you where the Bible says keep the Sabbath. And, and if you don't keep it, you're, you're worth of death and what have you. That's the old. So you say, well, did that cross over? Show me the New Testament. Are they teaching the same thing about the Sabbath? And you find out they didn't. As a matter of fact, you said Jesus broke the Sabbath. The Sabbath was fulfilled. Colossians said it. He fulfilled it on the cross. From old to new. Truth progresses from old to new. From old to new. The New Testament will give us understanding of the mysteries and, uh, uh, and, and, and the teachings of God in the old. God told his disciples that you have received and gotten an understanding Prophets have waited for years to see this understanding and get it, but it has been given unto you. Scripture. Keep your eyes on the scriptures the Lord told you. Listen, I don't have to know much. I can be a young convert. And, and they have various teachings, like the serpent seed doctrine. Well, Cain was the son of of the devil and Eve. Now, I don't know much about the scriptures to say, show me that. And if it's true, all you have to do is what? Read it. But if they can't read it and show it to you, red flag. You've got some teachers that teach well-known teacher that Jesus was born again when he went to hell. I've heard Copeland say everything you could imagine took place on Jesus when he went to hell. That's when he was born again, something like that. Show me that where it's written. So you have to be careful. Now, one of the major teachings of God is the Trinitarian doctrine of a triune God. God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Ghost, three in one God. The only problem is, is that a lot of terminologies that they use are not scriptural. Now, many of them argue that a lot of words we use are not scriptural. Monotheism, meaning the belief in one God. Uh, and, and Christianity, which is not in the scriptures. Well, I can understand that, but you see, none of those words we have to use to defend our belief in one God. We can quote it and read it just as the scriptures say it. But when you have to add terminologies to defend your gospel, something is wrong. The Trinitarian teachings, are you listening? They teach and they add terminologies to the scriptures that are just not there. And some say that the revelation of the Trinity did not come about until the New Testament. Well, the Old Testament, the New Testament uh, preachers only had the Old Testament to preach from. And they preached from the law and the prophets and the Psalms and they came up with Jesus. Amen. Jesus name baptism. The infilling of the Holy Ghost. One God. Preaching from the scripture they had. So the Old Testament knew and spoke about God being with us. Amen. 
You have to be careful. The Trinitarian brethren, they use, for an example, if you can understand me, you have the, the apostles, what they call the primitive church. The church that Jesus taught in. Then you have the pre-Nicene fathers. Before the Council of Nicaea, they had people that were supposed to be disciples of the disciples. And this is what they call the apostolic fathers, or the post-apostolic fathers, the fathers of the church after the apostles. And it is in this period of time, after around 100 AD, all the way up, that they came up with these different understandings and terminologies of the Godhead. Triune God. They coined, invented the word Trinity. That Jesus is the second person of the Godhead. That God is one being in three distinct, separate persons. And that God was 100%, Jesus was 100% man and 100% God. That the one being consists of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. Not three gods, but three persons that make up the one God. Now, the only problem, one, one problem I have with that is this. And you look at the YouTube, you look at different articles, and they'll tell you, the, the pre nicene fathers, they believed in the Holy Trinity. Meaning, the preachers after the apostles, they taught this, and they taught that. And the word, they, they created the word Trinity to define the Godhead and, and things of that sort. Now, the only problem with that is this. The apostles were taught directly by Jesus himself. How is it that Jesus never used now one of those terminologies? I feel a virtue. Jesus never said that I and the Father are separate and distinct in the, uh, individuals or persons. Jesus never said that I am the second person of the Godhead. Jesus never said that the Godhead is a holy trinity. Now how is it that the Lord who taught the apostles and the apostles never used these terminologies, but now their so-called disciples of the apostles are coming up with all this. If that's the way it was, then why isn't it what? Written. And why didn't Jesus teach it to them like that? Why didn't Paul and Peter them write it like that? How come men after them had to create these terminologies when they were supposed to be teaching exactly what the apostles taught? Why not teach it just like they got it? If you take away the Trinitarian terminology and say, give me Bible for what you teach, it can't be done without 10,000 explanations. It can't be done because there's no scripture that says that, that Jesus is a part of the God. There is no scripture that, there is no scripture that calls Christ God the Son. There is no scripture that says that the Father, Son are distinct, separate individuals is not written. There is no scripture that says God is three and leaves it like that. Or he's a three in one God, co-equal in power, but all the same God. But three distinct persons is not written. You have to say that's what it means. But if you have to say that's what it means, then the scripture is not saying that's what it means. Now, how is it that every other teaching, you can practically go in and give word for word? Does the Bible teach that a man should be baptized? You can go right to the scriptures. They go right to the scriptures and find it. Does the Bible say God is one? They find all the scriptures that say God is one. Does the Bible say that Jesus Christ was God manifested in the flesh? Go right to the scriptures and they can show it. But when it comes to defining the Godhead, now you've got to add all these other terminologies that don't fit in. It'd be different if they could fit, but they don't. And why do you have to add it if it's already what? Written. Just read to me what it says. 
any Trinitarian preacher. Put down your terminologies and read it. Everything that the Trinitarian can teach, read it word for word in the scriptures. Now, if his terminology is not like you said it, then you're not talking scripture. 